This video was sponsored by Policy Genius. Well, I bet you're tired of seeing all this. This is one of those videos that it's not going to be my favorite video ever, but it just it has to be done. I told you guys from the beginning that I was going to bring you along for this entire thing. And now we're at this point where I've got a lot of things almost done, but I don't really have anything all the way done. So I'm going to take this video to finish up everything back here. I'm going to get the wall completely done, trimmed out. I have a cool finish that's going to go on these walls that hopefully you'll like. Let me preface it by saying my wife played a big role in that decision process. I'm also going to finish the bed. It's almost done. I have the oak tops finished. I have to get them installed and in place. I'm going to trim out the front of the bed and I'm going to finally add the drawer down here for storage so that that pulls out. By the end of this video, it is my pledge to you that the back one third of the Airstream will be completely finished, which is going to feel really good. And then I can start moving forward, getting on to the more exciting things, like in the next video when I start building out the kitchen, countertops, cabinets, sink, oven, whatever else goes in a kitchen in an RV. Anyways, follow along. Let me finish the back, just stay with me, and then we'll get on to the fun stuff. All right, so all that work I did last time, putting all this up, I'm gonna tear it down now, because that's what you do. One step forward, 10 steps back. All right, remember all those panels I painstakingly cut and put up last time? Well, to start off this week's video, I'm taking them all down because although I put them up, they weren't quite finished. The ones facing the bedroom need to be painted white to match the walls and the ones facing forward, well, they need something. But I'm not quite ready to tell you what that is yet. First, I had to sand my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Once I got all these pieces of quarter inch Baltic birch sanded to 120, it was time to paint them. Well, first it was time to prime them. But primer is paint. It's just a paint that you put on before the actual paint. So I could say I primed and then painted them, but just saying I painted them seems like it would go quicker. But now this hasn't gone quicker because I've spent all this time explaining paint and primer. Anyways, after I got them painted, I lightly sanded them to scuff them up. Well, only the ones facing forward. The ones facing the bedroom I left painted. Because I wanted them painted. After giving the forward facing panels a light sanding, I wiped them down with a tack cloth to clean them off. And then it was time to put this stuff on them. Yes, folks, you are in the presence of a 60s floral patterned wallpaper. Now you might be asking, who in their right mind would use wallpaper in 2023? Well, I'll tell you who. My wife. And I have learned a long time ago that when my wife wants something done, I just say yes and I don't question it. Actually, that's not entirely true. Usually I question it and we get into a big argument and it goes back and forth and I show her why my reason's better and she tells me why her reason's better and ultimately it always ends with her proving to me that her decision is better. Bottom line, we have a 1960s era Airstream and I personally think it would be a shame to fill it with a bunch of modern clean garbage. Why not embrace that 60s vibe and really lean into it? And what better place to start than with this beautiful 1960s floral patterned wallpaper. Now, this wallpaper was purchased on some website that wives look at when they're on the couch late at night. I don't know the name off the top of my head, but I will make sure to find out and include a link in the video description. The nice thing about this wallpaper is unlike traditional wallpapers that you have to get the wall wet and use glue, this is just peel and stick. So with Craig's help, it was pretty easy to peel the backer off and then slowly just work our way across the painted surface of those panels using this little squeegee to make sure we didn't get any creases or air bubbles. And before long, we had the entire thing covered. 
Now instead of doing each individual panel, I decided it would be easier to do two halves of the wall, sticking two panels together and doing the entire thing at once. Once we had the entire thing covered in wallpaper, all I had to do was take a razor blade and cut the two panels into two separate pieces. Is this how the professionals do it? I have no clue. I've never taken the time to look into what professional wallpaperists do in their day to day. Anyways, after getting the entire surface covered in this peel and stick wallpaper, I then just cut off all the excess from around the outside and then flipped it over to give it a nice trim right along the edge of my actual plywood panels. This is pretty easy. And in no time, I had all of the wall panels covered in this beautiful 1960s floral patterned wallpaper, and we were ready to take this Airstream up a notch. The hardest panel was this door panel for the arched doorway because it did have this pretty steep curve, but even that wasn't too bad. And in no time, these walls had more flowers on them than a loaf of bread. Get it? Because you use flour to make loaves of bread. Anyways, now that all the panels were covered in either paint or vintage wallpaper, it was time to start working on the storage drawer that was underneath the bed. Now I'd always planned on putting a drawer under the bed, I just didn't know what size I needed that drawer to be because my wall wasn't built yet, so I didn't know how big my opening was. But now that the wall was built, I could take measurements and start framing in that storage drawer. Right now, it's just a sheet of plywood. So my thought was make a face frame, cut out a hole the size of the drawer, and just glue and tack my face frame right onto the plywood. So I made a face frame the same way I would on any set of cabinets, just using some poplar because this will be painted and hooking it together with some pocket screws and glue. Once I had it all glued and screwed together, I stuck it in clamps and I waited for it to dry. And it's dry. So I took it out of clamps and I hauled it into the Airstream to make sure that it would fit. Now when I built the bed, I wasn't exactly sure where my wall was gonna land, so I stopped the bed back a little farther than it probably needed to be, so it stops just short of the actual wall. But with some creative trim work, I think we can make it look intentional. Using my face frame as a guide, I traced out the shape of the drawer opening onto my plywood, and using a multi-tool, I cut out that shape, making it just a little bit bigger so that the raw edge of the plywood would sit back behind the face frame and you wouldn't see it. Now to do some fancy trim work to cover up the fact that our bed is indeed a little short. As you can see on the edges here, there's this gap that goes into this void that's pretty much good for nothing. It's too small to make a storage space, but it still needs to be covered up or it's just gonna look awkward. I figured the easiest thing to do was just to glue some more pieces of poplar onto the end of my face frame and just box that area in so that you wouldn't even know that it was there. So I grabbed some more pieces of poplar and I glued them onto the sides of my face frame. I literally just told you that. So if you missed it, it's because you weren't paying attention. Put down your phone. Wait, 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 wait. Unless you're watching this on your phone, then keep looking at your phone. Anyways, while I waited for that to dry, I decided to start making my actual drawer face now that I knew what size it needed to be. I gotta tell you, after a couple weeks of working on that Airstream, trying to figure things out for the first time, it felt really good to be back in the shop and doing something that I actually knew how to do. In this case, making a shaker style drawer face. I did it the same way I make all my shaker style drawers or door faces. I find the center of the board and I dado out a one inch groove right down the middle of the board, approximately a quarter of an inch thick. I make sure it's centered by running it through on one side of the blade, flipping my piece around and running it through on the other side. This ensures that even if it's not exactly a quarter of an inch, it is exactly dead center in the middle of the board. After doing this to all my rail pieces, I needed to take my styles and cut a tenon on them. Now I know traditionally the styles wouldn't have the tenons, the rails would have the tenons, but I did things a little backwards on this one because I forgot which was which until I was building the drawer face. But having the tenons on your rails really only matters when you're doing cabinet doors and the door needs to support its own weight. For drawer faces, who really cares? 
Anyways, after getting my tenons cut on those styles, I inserted them into my rails and would you look at that, perfect mortise and tenon right into that approximately quarter inch groove. Then I took all my pieces and fit them together to make sure they had a nice friction fit and would glue up the way that I wanted them to. Yep, that looks like a frame. Way to go, Jason. A plus gold star. Now, normally I would take a half inch piece of MDF and I would rabbit it out so it's flush on the back and inset on the front. But I didn't have any half inch MDF laying around, but I did have a lot of quarter inch Baltic birch. So I just cut a quarter inch panel and threw it in the middle. And you know what? I'm okay with that because it looks totally fine. And boom, drawer face. Finally, I inserted the drawer face into my face frame just to make sure it was gonna fit the way I wanted it to before I glued the entire thing together. To glue it up, you don't need a lot of glue, just a little bit of glue smeared on those tenons. I find that a Rockler glue brush works great for this. I will include a link for these down in the video description. And because I'm only doing one drawer face, which is pretty rare, normally I'm doing 20 of these, it went pretty darn quick and in no time, my drawer face was in clamps and my face frame was ready to be taken out of clamps. And then quickly after that, my drawer face was ready to be taken out of clamps. Then it was back into the Airstream to permanently affix my face frame into the proper location, which obviously is that big gaping hole at the foot of the bed, right there. I just tapped it to the left, tapped it to the right until it was perfectly centered in between that doorway. And then all I did was reach in from the inside of that opening and screw it in place from the backside. This eliminated any visible fasteners or nails that I'd have to fill later and gave it a nice clean look. This video is sponsored by Policy Genius. It seems like the older I get, the more flipping paperwork I have to deal with. Just sorting through the mail becomes a challenge. What do I throw out? What do I keep? Is this important? I don't know, I'll ask my wife. That's why I put off getting life insurance for a long time, because I knew I needed life insurance, I knew it was important to protect my family, but I also assumed that getting life insurance meant I had to do a ton of paperwork and I didn't want to deal with it. That was until I found Policy Genius. And the cool thing about Policy Genius is they take out all the headache and hassle from finding the right policy and they make it incredibly simple. All you do is go to policygenius.com, fill out a very small amount of information, and they do all the legwork. They search through, they find the best policy for you, and they make it very simple, which is what I need. And if you don't believe me, just check this out. I'll show you. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $25 per month for a million dollars of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Their licensed agents work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. There are no added fees and your personal details are private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. When did I buy a timeshare? That's tomorrow Jason's problem. Now, you're probably wondering, all right, all that information sounds great, so where do I go? What do I do? How do I sign up? Well, that part's even easier than what I just showed you. You just go here. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. So head to policygenius.com slash bourbonmoth or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. We all have to-do lists and most of the time we don't cross anything off of them. They just sit as a list and they're in the back of our mind and we have to get to them. Well, here's an easy one that you can mark off your list. Go to policygenius.com and find the right life insurance policy for you. I'm telling you, it's crazy easy. Now that that face frame was installed, I could slide in my panels. Now I purposely left a big enough gap to slide those panels in in front of that face frame. I figured it'd be easier to slide the panels in along the face frame rather than slide the face frame in along the panels because I didn't want to scratch up the freshly painted panels. After I got the two lower panels on the back side of the wall in, I thought I should stop and install these white oak tops. Because if I installed the rest of the panels first, then it would have been really hard for me to film myself installing these white oak tops. 
Now I was really bummed that I wasn't able to show these being installed in the video that I actually made them, but I guess it's not that big a deal, because you're about to see it right now. Now, if you remember, I painstakingly scribed each one of these so that they perfectly fit along the wall. And I was very happy to see that, well, they still fit. I mean, there's no reason they shouldn't, but it just seems like in woodworking, you get something to fit perfect once and then you go back to install it and for some reason it doesn't fit. So I was happy to see that these still fit right where they were supposed to. I attached these via some metal brackets on the underside and I did the same to this back panel that went in between the two, connecting the whole ensemble into this glorious wraparound oak bed topper. Now that you've seen me install those, it was time to finish paneling the back side of the wall. So I put my one big panel wrapping around the door on the left and then realized I needed a clamp to hold it in place. The clamp was just out of reach, so I used my foot to hold up the panel and I grabbed the clamp and as you can see, that did not work out how I planned it. Luckily, the panel was not damaged. I clamped it back up into the right position and stuck the other one over on the right. Then I used those white pan head screws that I showed you last time to install the panels. And because they were white, they blended right in and matched all the other interior rivets and looked very intentional. Now to make this thing a little more 60s. It was time to install these walnut covered, nope, that's not walnut wallpaper covered panels. Never thought I'd say that in a video, but it's gonna look great. Trust your wife, Jason. Believe in her vision. This went up pretty simple because I had already screwed these up once before and I just used the exact same screw holes and the exact same screws and in no time that entire wall was, well, looking like a garden. Here's a close-up shot of these white pan head screws that I use to hold up all the panels. Now, as you can see, if I carefully select where those screws go, I can hide them pretty well on the panel. Plus, the panel's so flippin' busy, you don't really notice those screws at all. Now, there's this seam here that you might be wondering about. That's actually where the wall for the bathroom is gonna land. It's gonna land right on that little piece and the seam is there so that I can actually remove the panels to the right of the door, take them off, and get to all the plumbing in that wall if I need to in the future. Now there was this one issue on the interior of the archway where you could see two pieces of exposed plywood, and I needed to do something to cover that up. Enter this floppy noodle, aka flexi trim. Apparently, flexible trim is a thing. I didn't really know that until I found this stuff on Amazon. But it's actually pretty cool. It is just what it's advertised as, flexible trim. I don't know if it's a hard rubber or an acrylic or what the heck this stuff is made out of, but apparently you can tack it up just like regular trim and it's paintable. Now it does say in the instructions that you should glue and tack it in place. However, I opted out of gluing it because I didn't want to make it that permanent. Should I ever need to take this down in the future for some reason, I really didn't want to have to scrape a bunch of glued on trim off of this wall. So hopefully it stays put. The other downside was I couldn't find pieces long enough to do the entire archway. So I did have to splice in a tiny little piece, but I put it down low so hopefully you won't really notice it once it's painted. In no time, I had the entire door trimmed out, and I gotta tell you, that was way quicker than me doing some crazy glue lamination to get that arch shape. That would have taken me an entire day. This took me two days, because I had to wait for it to show up on Amazon, and then about 10 minutes to install it. So ultimately, it actually cost me a day. Darn it, should have thought through that before I bought it. But it was easier to install. Once I got the trim on the back side of the wall as well, that evening I came back out to the Airstream and did a little late night paint work. Now if you're surprised by this olive green gold color, well, you shouldn't be. I mean, did you see the wallpaper my wife picked out? What other color would go with that? It's the 60s, man. Get on board. 
I also took the time that evening to put a coat of paint onto the drawer face, and then I came back out the next morning and did two more coats of paint until everything had three beautiful coats and I was ready to get everything installed. So with my paint all trimmed up, that's wrong, with my trim all painted up, I removed all of my tape. I'm not gonna lie, the wallpaper was really starting to grow on me. Seeing it again in the fresh morning light, it really took me back to those warm summer days when I was a kid in the 1960s and we'd go play outside in the sprinklers. How old do you think I am? I wasn't a kid in the 1960s. Jeez. With all my tape removed, it was time to install my drawer slides so that I could build a drawer. I don't usually like to build my drawers until I install the slides because once I install the slides, then I can take the measurement for the drawer box right off of my slides and I know it's gonna fit perfectly. So with my measurements in hand, it was back into the shop to make a drawer box. Once again, I was in my happy place. I've made so many of these drawer boxes in my life, I could probably do it blindfolded. I mean, they wouldn't look good and they'd be very, you know, out of square and ugly, but I could probably do it blindfolded. I do have an in-depth video on my channel of exactly how I make these drawer boxes. Basically, I just rip down strips of Baltic birch, I add a little groove at the bottom to hold a quarter inch plywood panel, and I just glue and tack them together. But the orientation of gluing and tacking them together actually makes an incredibly strong drawer box. I've been using these for years and have never had any issues. So if you wanna see that full video, I'll put a little clickable thing up there in the corner. Now, I said this wallpaper was growing on me and I had some extra laying around and I thought it would have been a crying shame if I didn't use one of the scraps to coat the bottom of the drawer box. You know, like contact paper. And whenever anybody opens the drawer, they'll be like, ooh, it matches, how nice. Really, I just thought it would impress my wife that I thought of this, so I was trying to earn some points. Anywho, easy peasy lemon squeezy, this box is so floral, it's gonna make me sneezy. That's a new one. Now to install my Bloom Undermount drawer hardware. I use this little jigget thing I picked up on Rockler that perfectly aligns where I need to drill my holes for the drawer slides. You install these little orange clicky things at the front of the drawer. I swear I've showed this a million times in a video, but hey, maybe you're new to my channel. And then all you gotta do is go set the drawer box on top of your slides and click installed. Now, doesn't that wallpaper drawer bottom just look so darn cute? Aww. With my drawer box installed, now it was time to install my drawer face. For this, I just used some Seinfeld trivia playing cards as spacers to get an even reveal around the entire outside. And then I was able to sink some screws right through the middle of the panel to hold the drawer face in place because I'm eventually gonna put some hardware on the front of this drawer face that has a big brass backer plate. So it'll cover those holes up. Just like that, the entire back of the Airstream is completely finished. What am I talking about just like that? Six videos later, the entire back of the Airstream is complete. I mean, look at this. How in the world did it take me six videos to get this much done? I'll tell you how. Curves. So many curves. But the important thing is, it's done. And now I can move forward to the fun stuff. Like the kitchen. Which is also curved. Now, I know, I know it's a bit much. It's a little busy, but let me just stop you right there and remind you that there's gonna be a bathroom wall here that's not gonna be wallpapered, okay? So you won't see this entire half at the same time you see this half. And then over here, there's gonna be kitchen cabinets that come up to about here and come all the way to the trim. So you're really just gonna see this tiny section at any one given time. That's at least what I keep 
telling myself. But if there's one thing I've learned over the years of being married to my wife, it is never question her design sense. Because I have in the past, and she always makes a beautiful space. So, there is that. Anyways, bottom line, I am so glad to be completely done with the entire back half of the Airstream. It's done. It's finished. All it needs is a mattress, and it's good to go. Which means that the next Airstream video, we get to move forward. Finally, some new territory. And I'm going to be starting on the kitchen, which is going to be a lot of fun. Countertops, cabinets, got to put a sink in, got to put a cooktop in, got a refrigerator to deal with, all sorts of stuff. So make sure you come back for that one and check out the link in the video description to our website to get cool merchandise, Patreon, behind the scenes footage and a whole bunch of extra perks. We got tools and supplies and all sorts of stuff down there. I got to get out of here. It's so hot in here. Whew, I'm sweating balls.